signature one, right? Or a classic? It's Marcus Margarita. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. Thank you. Or that's a pie. to be a mobile bartender or to start a mobile bartending business. You can 100% start wherever you are, whatever your situation, with two six foot tables, a few bartending tools, and service necessities like a cooler. You really don't even need the tables if you're starting from zero. I started with 50 business cards and a shaker kit. That's it. But for those of you who have asked about the portable bars that I use and are trying to figure out how to afford them and feeling like you can't get started without a portable bar, instead, let's just shift the focus on what you can do right now to at least get you moving in the direction of being able to afford them when the time comes. I can get into the pros and cons in another video because the portable bars can be beneficial. But in this video, let's focus on what you can do with some tables. Again, cost wise, the average six foot folding table from what I've seen, there's a range from like $55 to $100 per table. This is price in comparison between Target, Walmart, Home Depot, and Amazon. They all have tables within that general range. Number one thing I want you to take note of when it comes to these tables are the legs. You'll need tables with legs that have that curve on the feet and not just the legs that go straight down. I'll tell you why in a minute. When shopping for these tables, Target, Walmart, and Home Depot are great stores for convenience. There have been times where I needed tables at the last minute and being able to pull up to a store and just grab what I needed was super clutch. <laughs> The tricky part though is finding a store that has them in stock, but that's honestly a very small issue to navigate. Just look up the store that's closest to you that has what you need in stock. Like the internet can do that now. <laughs> Amazon is cool. We all love Amazon. It's great for comparing prices and searching for the best deal. However, this aligns with proper time management and planning ahead. Having time for delivery and any unforeseen late deliveries. Both avenues have their pros and cons and both avenues have worked for me. I would suggest getting two tables to start, just to start. One for the front bar where you mix and serve from and then the other one for back bar. Proper storage is necessary. This is also to give you adequate space in any event you find yourself needing help. Another bartender can come on, help you mix drinks and possibly be your bar back. But basically the two of you should be able to manage roughly a 50 person party with two six foot tables. Now, this does depend on a variety of factors, but just generally speaking, at minimum or at maximum, you and another bartender should be able to manage a party of that size. Keep in mind, you'll also need tablecloths. I would suggest getting a set of white and a set of black and then a set of table risers or leg risers. The table risers are the key to elevating the table setup. Raises it to bar height and it gives it like that bar feel. When I told you to take note of the legs on the tables, here's why. At least with the risers that I have, 
they're only compatible with the leg that have that curve on the feet. It's not compatible with the straight leg table. So just be mindful of that. The risers, they come in different lengths to give you different heights. The ones that I have, I bought based on my height. With consideration, some consideration, <laughs> to the average height of most people. But ultimately, the bartender's comfort is what matters most in this situation. So I bought the risers that best suited me for comfort and the safety of my back. Like sometimes I have to remember to like put my shoulders back because over time, like I lean forward to like mix, to mix stuff. For reference though, I'm six feet tall. Okay, so you have the tables, the table risers, the tablecloths. For everything else, links for most of the materials and supplies, including the tables themselves, are linked in the description. All right, so let's talk through the service details, including how much the service cost, how much was spent, and how much was made. Now, this will look different for everybody based on who you are, where you are, and what you're doing, and how you're doing it. We're all different. What we're doing is different. Our necessities and standards are different. Similar, but different. You can copy my pricing exactly, but your expenses and profits are probably gonna look different. You gotta take a moment to look at your own situation. This is a 40th birthday party with 40 guests and four hours of service. Sidebar, shout out to the angel numbers 444. Let the church say amen. <laughs> If you haven't seen the how much does mobile bartending cost video where I break down my pricing structure as it was at that moment in time and the operational cost video as it was at that moment in time, I think it'll be super helpful for you to watch those in addition to this one. It should help with understanding, you know, why I charge what I charge. It's also a great example of how things are ever changing. Now the pricing that I'm gonna share with you in this video is as it was for this particular event at that moment in time. <laughs> at the time of this recording, pricing has been updated again. Fingers crossed that it's at a rate to where I don't have to mess with it again for a while. I usually do update it though, at least once a year, just depending on, you know, what's going on. But we gonna see. There is another link in the description that shares current pricing structure. But anyway, I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay, so for this party, charges included $50 an hour per bartender needed with consideration to early arrival for setup and post-service cleanup. With this particular event, I calculated one hour for setup and one hour for cleanup. A 40 person party with consideration to the way that we provide service requires two bartenders. So I charged $100 for the two bartenders, multiplied that by the six hours of on-site service. Toilets running, hold please. <laughs> then the charges included, included, <laughs> Then the charges included $22 per person, including everything that was needed for bar service, minus the alcohol. So at $22 a person, this price included two signature cocktail options. This is with consideration to the four hours of service. If you heard me talk about the tiers, we're in the three to four hour tier. It includes the non-alcoholic components to execute the signature cocktails. This includes the garnishes that complement. Additional mixers like club soda and tonic for simple options like vodka soda or gin and tonic, glassware or just drinkware in general, napkins, straws, ice, planning and management assistance. There's work that happens leading up to these parties, client communications, putting together a customized shopping list, just stuff like that. So the total service charge for this party was $1,650. What I didn't charge for, but normally do, is the six foot table that I bought. The client initially booked with her own table in mind. However, being that I've worked with them before and it's stuff that happened in between, but I later learned that they only had the one table. And basically it just was not gonna be enough space for two bartenders serving 40 guests. Regardless, a back bar table is always necessary, even for a small party of 10, depending. <laughs> but you need beer and wine storage, glassware storage, or just drinkware storage in general. And just extra space for the bartender to have space 
and work comfortably. Their previous party, I wasn't actually there. The girl that was working with me at the time managed the event and made it, made it work with the single table that they provided. But it was also only 10 guests, so she was able to manage. However, based on her feedback, she still struggled to work within that limited space. Like I said, there was stuff that happened in between, but fast forward to finalizing the details, I told her an extra table was needed when she was telling me that she only had that one. But at that point, everything was pretty much squared away, including the paid balance. So I honestly just didn't feel like being bothered <laughs> with creating another invoice with everything else I had going on. And it, it really just wasn't worth, it really just wasn't worth the effort in doing all of that. But I just say this to say, I usually charge for the tables, but this time I didn't. The theme was White Lotus Sicily, season two Sicily vibes. So with consideration to that, I shared a list of cocktails that I thought would complement well. And she chose the Italian margarita and an old fashioned that I just simply put a seasonal twist to. So the cocktails were fairly simple. So to tie it all together, there was also catered, handcrafted on-site pizza there was also salad and charcuterie, and then a DJ. The DJ, <laughs> the DJ was a vibe. I wish I could use the actual music he played in this video, but I can't because of copyright. But that party was fun. I'm personally though, still good on the parties. I would rather not be there if I don't have to, but that one, that one was a vibe. And if you can't tell, like at the end, Chris, he was the bartender working with me. He smoking a cigar and making drinks. And it was, it was just so, it was fun. It was fun. They did a good, she did a good job on that party. Cause it was the wife who planned it for her husband's 40th. And it was just, it was just great. It was great. They, they had fun. So anyway, 40 guests, four hours of service, two signature cocktails providing everything needed minus the alcohol. Total service, $1,650. First things first, processing fees. There's an initial deposit to hold the date and then there's a balance due. At the time of booking, I was paying 3.3% plus 30 cents per transaction. If you're actually doing the math, there was also a refund issued. I'm not gonna get into why, just know that all processing is subject to that fee, including refunds. So that's how I ended up paying the $72.69 in total in processing fees. And for the lady that commented that these are tax write-offs, yes, I know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Then it's the 10% I set aside for anything unforeseen. After the processing fees and the 10%, I then budget for upfront event expenses or party expenses. So everything that I needed to spend for this particular party, I budgeted out. I focus, I focus, I focus. <laughs> Keeping the budget around 45% of what's remaining after processing and the 10% savings. Why 45% Brittany? Because, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because people really just be annoying sometimes. But I also, they're very legit questions. I don't know, I'm just, don't mind me. But in all seriousness, why the 45%? Because after much trial and error from overspending, barely breaking even, teaching myself how to operate a business and teaching myself how to operate a mobile bartending business, that is the percentage that I found that works for me. I've been able to maintain this budget standard for at least, at least the past year, I wanna say the last two years, this has been working for me. And fast forward to where I currently am in my business, it's still working just fine. And at the time of this recording, with regard to things that I've already shared, my focus has been to retain as much profit as possible and making my money back. Yeah, Brittany, that's business anyway. That's what you're supposed to do, blah, blah, blah. But I just say that to say I haven't been, well, I don't wanna say that I'm done investing in my business, but that but that's what I've been doing. I've just been reinvesting it, reinvesting it, reinvesting it, putting it back into the business, putting it back into the business. So like I said, I don't wanna say that I'm done investing in my business, but that's just kind of how I've been feeling lately, especially as I create a whole nother business. So 
yeah, my focus has really just been just making just making my money back. Okay, so the 45% of the remaining $1,412.31 is $635.54. How I budget? I first account for labor. I need the two bartenders to manage the bar. The hourly rate is still at $20 an hour with consideration to tips. This includes all on-site hours. This means that the bartenders will arrive one hour prior to service with consideration to the time it may take to clean up. Prior to service, meaning what time did the client book to have the bar open? What time do they want the bartender to start pouring drinks, mixing drinks, and serving guests. She booked for open bar service to start at six. So I scheduled the bartender to arrive at five. This also gives some wiggle room for, for people who have a tendency to be late, even though be on time. For cleanup, for a party this size, with consideration to the breakdown. Remember, I bought my own table, so we gotta break all this stuff down. We can't just leave it just because they're still partying. But again, I estimated an additional hour for cleanup. Open bar service was scheduled from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. At 10 p.m., it's time to go. Now, there are nuances and special circumstances, but I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just trying to keep this as straightforward as possible. We can talk about other stuff in another video. But anyway, I budgeted the, I budgeted the 120 for the two bartenders. However, we ended up leaving, walking out the door right at 10 o'clock. So I only had to pay a hundred dollars each bartender then there's the ooh, a butterfly then there's the planning and management assistance the self pay or the money that i pay myself real quick though if i bartend yes i pay myself the bartending money but usually i try to stay away from that if i can just manage planning and you know managing the event itself then you know i'm just fine with that but Sometimes it is really tricky to find a reliable, good, reliable bartender. So sometimes I end up just managing the task. But just generally speaking, planning and management, I do pay myself that because I don't have anybody doing that for me. I do that part myself. And with regard to me moving in a different direction, somebody's gonna need to manage that task. But anyway, this is what I pay myself for the work leading up to the event or the party. This includes early arrival to set everything up. Now this may sound confusing. Brittany, you just said one hour prior to service. Yes, I know. But on the planning and management side, I have to or someone needs to arrive early enough to ensure a proper setup, proper. <laughs> Now this will vary from business to business. Not everyone will need to show up and put as much effort and detail that I put into stuff. This is just how my brain works. This is just what my standards and preferences are. And ultimately just how I want my business to be. There is a lot to explain about a lot and I could go on and on and on about a lot, giving you different scenarios and with that, it is my suggestion, suggestion, suggestion to simply subscribe because there's just too much information for me to share straightforwardly in this one video. And certainly way too much information to condense into an ebook or a single course. Then I budget for the cost of the printed menu. I, for the most part, use a template that I created from scratch that I then use to edit in Canva. Like I created in, I created it in Canva. And so I just use Canva to just update it based on the details of the event. Then I save it, send it to the printer. I use an outside printer, an outside printing service. I pick it up and that's, that's it. For this event, I budgeted for one menu, but I thought that I wanted to put one menu on each end of the table, each end of the bar or each end of the table. But then once I started doing the setup, I realized that just the one was good enough as you saw. Ice, I budget ice based on an educated guess based on the details of the event. I consider things like people will mostly drink cocktails and will be serving outside. And overall just being safe 
been sorry. There have been times where we had to make store runs because we ran out of ice. So I ended up buying 11 seven pound bags. That's 77 pounds of ice. It was fairly cool and service was during the evening hours. So it wasn't as hot as say a midday party outside like at one o'clock in Georgia. We also use a lot of fresh ice in our cocktails. Like we shake with ice and then we fill the glass with fresh ice and then strain the cocktail over the fresh ice. We don't just shake with the ice and then dump all the contents into the glass. Like I just, ugh, just thinking about it just irritates me. I don't, I don't like that. We use fresh ice. It just looks sloppy. In some cases though, we do use just the dirty ice. I mean, it's only so much that can be controlled and just depending on the situation and whatnot. But just generally speaking, we use fresh ice. Some ice was stored in the cooler outside while the other bags were placed in the freezer inside the house. Ice within itself really is a topic to discuss because like with everything else, it just depends. But I'm just gonna stop there because I'll keep going otherwise. <laughs> then after I budget for all of that stuff, what's left over, I budget for ingredients and service necessities. The ingredients budget, cocktail ingredients budget was $214.54. Now keep in mind, I make everything from scratch. If you don't know, yes, I make everything from scratch. All the cocktail, all the cocktail ingredients are prepared fresh. So when it comes to ingredients like everything else, this will apply to you differently. Most stuff I buy in bulk. So there was a lot that I just didn't have to buy. And because they chose margaritas and old fashions for their signatures, I still didn't even need to buy much. So ingredients end up only costing $29.85. Now there was one thing that I didn't budget for, and that was content help. Anna, who was helping me take the ice out of the car, she was not scheduled to be a bartender. She does help me bartend, but she wasn't, she just wasn't there for that. But anyway, she charged $120 to help with capturing some photos and some short video clips. All the footage from this video, however, is from my own camera. It's all stuff that I capture on my own. From the moving and hauling and the setup, like I was there by myself. They hadn't even got they hadn't even gotten there yet. Or she hadn't even gotten there yet. So after all of that, in total, I spent $539.35 with $872.96 left over. Now keep in mind, there was a significant amount of trial and error, corners cut, buying in bulk, and things that I've learned over time that has made this happen. This is not to say, charge this much, you'll spend this much, you'll make this much. I'm merely sharing to extend as much insight as I possibly can to help you guys. This is just to give you a general idea of the possibilities and to help you navigate your own mobile bartending business. I'm just doing what I can to help. But with that, I also want to mention that these videos are not just to help you, but they're to help me too. Some of you all already know where I stand on this whole thing. If you don't know, to get caught up, the video is linked in the description. But for everyone who is already aware, it's been a process. But I found some understanding with why God or source, or source, told me to do this. And a belief has been developed, again, over time, is that it's because this is the avenue. This is the way that will lead me to my next destination, where I'm going next. Still not sure where that is exactly. I have some ideas, set some intentions, and I have some goals, but we're still, we're still just navigating. It's one step at a time over here. This has been a process, but I'll update y'all on that later if you wanna know. Comment and tell me if you wanna know. I feel like this is a real take on like entrepreneurial life though because everybody else makes it seem so like freeing and rewarding and yeah, it can be those things, but it's also a lot of like uncertainty and moving in faith and being comfortable with not knowing. Like <laughs> this stuff ain't no joke, bro. But anyway, with all that, this is how you can mobile bartend with some tables and make money with some tables. You do not need a portable bar. At least you don't need to be stressing over it and making excuses about why you can't start. Your pricing may look different 
depending on a variety of factors in both your personal life and business. But I hope this helped to give you a better understanding and an overall general idea of how to make the money you need or just want to make and how you can do so with some tables. You do not need a portable bar just to start. But for those of you who insist on knowing where I get those bars from and everything else, see the links in the description. If you found this video helpful, help me help you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. Most people that are watching these videos are not even subscribed to the channel, which I find very interesting, but I get it. I don't subscribe to every channel I watch either. It just depends. Anyway, if you haven't already, subscribe, <laughs> help a sister out, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.